Establishing battlefield control. Welcome everybody to our second dev talk uh, for Renegade X Firestorm. This is Fabi. Uh, this is Havoc89 again. Yeah, great to be back and talking to you folks immediately-ish after. Close enough to immediately. This is Josh56, as per usual. I'm Sarah, but you might know me by a bunch of uh, different nicknames. And we're happy to be talking to all of you. First of all, a uh, huge reception of Renegade X's latest videos. We had our, we had our Renegade X Firestorm reveal trailer, uh, which had 92,000 views on YouTube. We had our dev talk, the first one, building a Tiberian Sun FPS with 157,000 views on YouTube. Of course, almost the same numbers on Facebook. Uh, we've got thousands of new subscribers on, on YouTube and Facebook. So really this just dropped at the right time with the revival of CNC and the remaster coming out. Um, this is a really good time for CNC. And in the last month, we've had tons and tons of reception views as well as questions. Um, that we plan on answering uh, later this podcast. Yeah, it was pretty obvious that everybody's really excited about what they've seen so far, and we're really excited to be sharing more details about it now. Yeah, uh, I believe uh, it's probably a great time now to just jump right into it. It's got a lot of ground to cover. So before jumping into your questions, which we got from our forums, from the Facebook Renegade X page, from uh, our latest Renegade X YouTube videos. Uh, we were able to mark a bunch of questions. We hope to answer some of them today. But before we get into that, we want to talk a little bit about uh, game design. So first topic, um, we want to talk about player sizes, server sizes rather for this game. So Havik, you want to comment on that? Sure. Uh, so as you guys know, the original Renegade was never really intended for 64 players. Um, I believe when it launched, it only really went up to 32. I could be wrong. But it, was, it wasn't really meant for a, a, a giant amount of players as opposed to a game like Battlefield where you know it, it was designed to be for larger players. Um, and because Renegade X is a, is a remake at its core, uh, and even in map design philosophy, we kind of have the same issue with Renegade X in general, where there's almost too much action all the time every in, in, in almost every area of the map um, you know there's there's certain issues like base locking and getting bottlenecked those are all things that um, we wanted to address in Firestorm specifically. basically you want to address field yeah yeah just say it <laughs> well, it's, it's not just feel. So it's it's really interesting because like we do have maps in Renex that are meant for larger players, but because this is a spiritual remake, people want that nostalgia. People want to replay the old maps again, and and that's why more often than not, the maps like Wall of Field or like Islands, and whatnot, they're they they're super popular because people want to rem reminisce about them. Um, so. You know, we kind of break out of that conformity a little bit with Firestorm just because it's not based off of the game. It's it's us just doing new stuff and that's it. It's based off of a game, but not based off of a game. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what to keep in mind is that the original Renegade maps, people were very happy to play like 2v2s, 10v10s, 20 versus 20. Um, so when we had 64 players, which is something internally when making Renegade X, when, you know, something that we discussed, because 64 players, although the community loves it in the original game, you just get base locks, you get bottlenecks, you get these hour long or couple hour long games. Sometimes it could be a lot of fun, other times not so much. Uh, and then once the building dies, everybody leaves because they've invested so much time into the game. Um, you know, when you have these kind of base locking and bottlenecks, it makes it very difficult to sneak around. It makes it very difficult to be tactical and to infiltrate bases because you have everybody everywhere. Uh, and you have, you know, pe someone watching the mine count and someone's in every building and someone's in every entrance and someone's in every part of every map. And uh, we wanted to make uh, kind of new landscape, new maps that 
actually fit a 64 player uh, size for servers because I mean, we all want to have those huge battles, really epic, you know, huge battles, but we want to have um, maps that can handle that. And it looks like with our experience with Renegade X, um, people are not as likely to join a four player server or a 10 player server. People want to join our main servers, big servers, have 30, 40, 50, 60 players in them. So um, this is kind of, I think, the best solution. Right, right. So in general, you're, you're speaking about like uh, the fact that eh, no one really wants to join that 4v4. I, I don't even look what to think about joining during the day unless I see at least like 20 plus people in a server and for Renex. So uh, I share yeah, that it's, it's, like anybody else. Yeah, It's really strange because it's not that the game doesn't play well in low players. Like it is actually designed better for like a 30 to 40 player count. Um, I think there's a there's a there's a sweet spot. Um, what Firestorm also is going to need to incorporate is things for low player counts. Because yeah, definitely. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever played like any other battlefields. One v one in battlefield <laughs> is just why am I here? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Uh, some maybe some small maps. Uh, now that we have the ability to designate what maps show up and what maps are in rotation by size and by player count, that'll be a whole lot easier. Yeah, the Firestorm. Uh, yeah, so in Renex and in OG Ren, you guys probably noticed that the maps were in the shape of like a horseshoe in a way, or like a U-shaped. Um, where the bases were, if you were to take, the, take a look at the map from the top down, bases are actually pretty close together. And you have these like connecting infantry only areas between the two bases, and then you have a field on the opposite side. If you look at under, that's a very good example. Because if you think about it, the power plants on under are less than about 500 feet away from each other in reality. <laughs> that's true. Even uh, a map like field or islands, they're extremely close. So with Firestorm, we wanted to get away from isolating uh, infantry and vehicle only areas. Uh, we wanted to go for a more of a mixed combat. Um, everything is good against everything else, but um, there are natural counters to everything that's either through infantry or through vehicles. So you get a, a lot more of a chaotic, unpredictable experience when everything is on the table as opposed to, okay, I know I'm going to the tunnels, I'm going to run into Mendoza's, you know? It, it becomes a lot more uh, replayable, and you get uh, different experiences every time you play the game. And do you want to talk about the performance and like new graphics? Oh, uh, oh. yes, yes. So we have been doing some tests in the UDK specifically as to can we actually achieve larger maps. We we did briefly talk about this in our last dev talk where our map sizes were just way too big. They were inching on like two square kilometers and plus. Um, so after a bit of digging through and some creative uh, problem solving, I think we we managed to find this sweet spot where we can indeed go larger than some of the larger maps in Renex, like Outposts, for example. And uh, it's really just about this design philosophy of less is more. And it's not really about using geometry to uh, design the map, but rather just using a, a singular landscape to help kind of carve out every single portion of the map. So it's less about like uh, shoving every single bit of detail and rocks and canyons and whatnot in a tiny space, but rather um, having it being spread out, having there be less of it, and more battlefield style where it's a lot more open. It's not really about invisible walls or barriers. Um, yes, you could potentially go out into the open, but then you're going to be a giant target because there's going to be a, a lack of cover potentially, or you're going to be out in the open. So you could potentially do it. It's not necessarily a good idea. Um, we'll we'll be working all that stuff out uh, as we, you know, design the maps. But that's generally the philosophy going forward. 
Um, yes, we do want to be a little bit more open, and we have found ways to not only improve the graphical quality, but um, also be able to create larger maps. And pull as much FPS as possible out of this decaying engine. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, like, I, yes. I, like you, you guys have to realize that we're not like pros, right? Like we're, we're just kind of doing this as a hobby. So we don't know all the ins and outs of the engines and we don't necessarily always know what the best approaches are, but you know, it, that's, that's how you learn. You, you kind of use it for a bit and get used to it and figure out ways to, to solve issues, uh, technical issues and push, push the engine forward. Yep. Just lots of creative problem solving going into this. Yep. <laughs> I will say though that the new landscape setup, they look gorgeous. Like that they do. You wanna mention the hybrid lighting? That you oh yeah, with here? Yeah. yeah. Sure. So uh in beta one, I'm sure you guys remember the light quality on all the maps are really well well made. It was pretty pristine you didn't have like shadows when you were already in shadow areas and stuff like that uh, we've kind of revived that back a little bit but then we've also combined it with fully static lighting to to have sort of the best of both um, there are some issues with it but for the most part it generally improves the quality and the lighting overall um, and you know if you are on a lower lower end PC you could still turn off dynamic lighting and you'll still actually get a sunlight so it's it's kind of nice that it has both abilities um, and you know when when I was setting up this this level originally uh, I was really concerned about what the FPS would be for everybody so you know I, I asked everybody to, to give it a try and compare it to some of you know Renexus maps and on average I think everybody got a general boost in FPS on a larger map, which is kind of ironic, but... A large know, map there, full but... of trees. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll post up footage. There's literal forests in that map. And yet, on top of that, there's also the full dynamic uh, day, um, daylight, not daylight cycle. Don't, don't confuse it with that. I'm just talking about the old lighting lighting system. That's in there as well, which is generally an FPS hog. Um, both of those together still outperform a map uh, that's significantly smaller in Renex, so we're, we're making good headway there. So uh, as soon as that problem was more or less, uh, I don't want to say solved, but feels like it's pretty much solved, we did kind of decide, okay, yeah, we can we can open up Firestorm a bit more and, and not be forced to go down the route of Renex in terms and of uh, game design. You know, that's one thing I really love about uh, seeing Renegade X like progress along the time. It really grows with the developers. Like we learn new things and we see what works or we just gain more technical knowledge and we can implement better looking things that have better performance, such as that new landscape you were testing. And specifically with Firestorm, I think Having the more open maps and less corridors built of all rocks that guide people in a general direction, it really creates a more like immersive game. And that's one thing I really love about Firestorm. Yeah, like as soon as you're in the map, you feel like you're in the world, which immediately immediately feels so much more nicer to, to look at. Yep. And let's just not forget that not having a map built with a bunch of default stock UDK rocks just already <laughs> looks way better. Everything just looks so much more natural. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time trying to build a, a more procedural workflow um, for landscapes in general. Um, and I did a little like real time demo test where I spent literally 30 minutes to make a map that looked as good as the test map. Um, and it's and it's all based on like height based projections and whatnot, so it, it works really well. It's it's looking really promising. All right, I think we've spent enough time on that. By yeah, the way. probably. I rambled, didn't I? <laughs> uh, you didn't <laughs> ramble. It was all it was all good information. Mm -hmm. I believe that means we're jumping into Q and A's. 
Uh, actually, uh, before that, can you... Let's, let's talk about, like, uh, potential recruitment. Um, we are looking for, you know, new helping hands all the time. Uh, we are looking for artists, we're looking for programmers, we're looking for composers, we're looking for pretty much everybody. Uh, so if you are interested in, in like helping us out, I know it's in it's it is a dated engine, but uh, there. I mean, just look at the game. It looks cool. It looks awesome. Don't you want to work on this? So well, if where, you could want they, to... where could they see the application, sir? But yeah, that was a good. That was what I was about to say next. Is uh, we'll, we'll make a forum topic. Um, so just head on over to the Renegade X forums, and uh, you'll be able to post in there. Right. So okay. Now it sounds like we could answer some questions. Yes, please. Perfect. Yeah. So I could I, I could ask some of the questions, and then uh, either of you or any of you rather could jump in and and answer. So some of these are going to require longer answers, and some are going to require shorter answers. But they're all interesting questions. We picked out the most relevant ones. Uh, there were some overlapping in the uh, comment sections of our videos, so we, we tried to get it down to the essentials. So, is Renegade X Firestorm only on PC, or could it be played on PS4? And what is the release date? Uh, uh, well, yes. Soon, I, trademark. I, I can, yes, soon. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> I, I guess I can go ahead and answer that. It's only going to be on PC. We don't don't have the resources to port things to the PS4, and also that'll also be a uh, we already have I won't say issues getting on other platforms such as Steam Origin and whatnot. But yeah, converting it to PS4, I can safely say not in a timely fashion. Okay, so in terms of release date, we're looking at quarter four. 2020 okay so sometime in the fall maybe uh if there are any delays we'll let you know but that's the target that we're looking at um does this replace renegade x or is this a separate game or add-on the answer to this question is it does not replace renegade x you can still play renegade x once you have firestorm but the idea is that you can uh, launch the Renegade X launcher and be able to download firestorm as a uh, as an update um, you'll be able to play on Firestorm servers, Renegade X servers, maybe a server that runs some Renegade X maps and some Firestorm maps. So it's more like an add-on um, with its own levels, units, etc. I kind of want to caveat that with um, the more we think about it, it, just because Firestorm plays so differently, probably don't want to mix servers, to be honest. Something we'll have to figure out as we. Yeah, that's closer. definitely gonna have to be something to be thought about. All right, next question. Next question. Uh, do you guys know or have a list of classes or loadout for Firestorm, as well as what vehicles will make it in the game? Uh, yes and no. We we do have a, a basic list of all of the core elements that we want. Um, yeah, I think we've. Uh, oh, oops. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I think we've we've settled on the two loadouts for class system. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's technically six character classes per uh, per team, and each character class has two different loadouts. Uh, and just swapping loadouts is basically free of charge. So at any point, you can just go up to a master control or purchase terminal and switch your loadout without having to buy another character. Um, but buying another character would cost money. Yeah. Yes. Potentially, yes. if that character class is yes. just free. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then in terms of vehicles, there will likely be uh, seven core vehicles per... Or no, wait, I forgot to include the air vehicles, so that would make uh, nine core vehicles. And then potentially a tenth one for something like an epic vehicle. Which we will talk more about later. Yeah. Um, I, I mentioned this in the last dev talk that not everything necessarily works in first person. Uh, so that's why not everything from Firestorm is going to be in in the game. 
Okay, next question. Uh, what computer specs will I need to run this game? So, I guess, what are the minimum system requirements? Maybe we should ask Hande. Yeah, we should probably ask Hande. I mean, <laughs> Hande or Konis or somebody who struggles. <laughs> Honestly, if you can run Renegade X, you could probably run this game. You can probably run Firestorm. Strangely enough, I think it might be easier to run Firestorm than Renegade X. Yeah, yeah. Like, Renegade X was being developed when we were all still pretty new at this and things weren't necessarily optimized. Here, we're, you know, we're, we're building an, a new expansion that's being designed in a, in a more optimal way. So it's, it's potentially possible that uh, it requires less specs, but at the same time, we're also throwing in much larger maps. Uh, well, we don't necessarily have a concrete answer for this but play renegade x download it see if you can run it if you can great if you can't uh sorry sorry is the best thing <laughs> <for that. laughs> like you have to remember this is the same game engine as gears of war 3 so that was an xbox 360 uh video game from like decades ago so if you know think of it like in terms of that all right so is it possible to play the alpha or to get into the test so i think this this person just is looking at something he wants to play or she wants to play and wants to join what are the rules with that uh i think right now we're not looking for any alpha testers uh if we are looking for a bigger alpha test um then please watch for announcements um at this point, I don't foresee it, but at the very least, you'll be able to play the game really soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. you said that about right. We're just not looking for anybody right now, but they should keep their eyes and ears open. Yeah, it, it's very likely that we'll probably expand it out more at some point when we're much closer to launch and we, we want to test more broad scale. But for now, um, we, we have plenty of alpha testers, and uh, as soon as we have something that's up and running that we are ready to, ready to start testing on a much larger scale, then we'll reach out to people. Or we'll just make like a, a news topic. We don't know yet. We'll, we'll figure it out as we go. Okay, can I play on MacBook and Linux as well? So. Uh -huh. So currently the only supported platform by the developers is Windows. However, there are some operations that are run led by the community and some developers that are working on getting a, an easy to use installation for Linux. But it's not supported, but there are community, community, uh, community projects. There are community efforts to work towards it. And for uh, Apple or Mac, there are some people who have been able to get it to work, but there is no real concrete answer or like a guide on how to get it working. So officially not supported. Yeah. But uh, officially no, unofficially, you're gonna have to talk to some people. <laughs> okay, will there be updates to the environment assets such as blossom trees and vine holes and visceroids, fiends, wildlife? So, will we be seeing these amazing Tiberian Sun uh, lore items back in this game? That is certainly the goal. Yeah. Sorry, you could go first. Oh, no, I was going to say, I, I mean, you probably know better than me. It seems like, uh, as far as environmental items, Sans wildlife, we should probably, I mean, it looks like people are trying to create those already. Just, I think wildlife is going to be something that it's probably going to be like a post-launch unless there's just a lot of time for it because that has to be thought about i don't know some people may not like the nostalgia of dying to a random tip fiend some people may really hate the idea of just <laughs> ai wildlife walking around getting eaten by tiberium dogs <laughs> out of the blue but yeah it'll that wildlife is probably going to be less likely than the actual environmental items like blossom trees like you kind of need those for tiberian sun to look like tiberian sun 
Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, obviously the floaters and the fiends are really cool. Uh, it's low priority right now, and we may add it later, but I don't expect it for the launch. Uh, it would certainly be cool to be turned into a visceroid as well, if uh, you know, if you're killed by a chemical weapon. But again, not a high priority. Yeah, but in terms of making the environments and maps actually look like a TS environment, yeah, yeah, there there are plans to to design a lot of environment assets. Um, and again, I'm just going to segue into, hey, if you're looking to join and you want to do some modeling stuff, we're looking for environment artists. <laughs> Can uh, anybody model quadrupeds? <laughs> if you want to sculpt a uh, Tiberian dog, you know you know where to find us. It's a really weird sentence. I just you said, know but... you know where to find us, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know where to find us, dog. I like it. Okay, uh, so what a favorite question. Yeah, when a banshee is shot down, does it say "whoops"? You know what? Yes, <laughs> because yeah, let's just say. But it's in Tiberian Sun. It's an amazing question. This was like the top rated question on the video. Like everyone wants to know, is the Banshee gonna say whoops? Like they, they wanna know this better than like the release date. Um, just because you guys want it, baby. We're giving it to you. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how loud that whoops is going to have to be for anyone but the pilot to hear it. But yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Okay, so since this game reminds me very much of a future-like Battlefield-style game, what is your guys' opinion, okay, that was weird, on the game having multi-seat vehicles? Well, if you have played the original Renegade, we have a few multi-seat vehicles, including the APC in Chinook. Um, if you're referring to uh, passenger weapons, we have the Chinook. Uh, but in this game, yes, uh, we want to talk a little bit about the Mammoth Mark, maybe later. Um, but we do want to have a few multi-seat vehicles, yes. Right. The uh, APCs, those those we can pretty much confirm, especially the, the subterranean APC and the amphibious APC are both going to have passenger weapons. So that's already the confirmed yep. feature. We do want to make them useful on the battlefield as well, so more about that later. Because the subterranean APC is mostly useful on its own. The amphibious APC in the middle of a desert really is just a big target with a bunch of people <laughs> inside to kill. <laughs> so yes, the weapons would be added to that for the sake of you know, making it useful. But in terms of like things like Titans and Tick Tanks, I don't, I don't think we're going to do any passenger weapons or stuff like that. He says that. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. We'll see what works and what doesn't. Yeah. Okay, so what about the Juggernauts? What about it? Uh, it's there. It works. It doesn't deploy. We thought it would be more fun um, to kind of play it more no, fluidly. No, it is going to deploy. It's well, just, we never set it, it up. <laughs> it's just not okay. set up to deploy in the alpha. Yeah. It may deploy it. The Juggernaut is yeah, It's kind of a on the table. It, the most of it works kind of... Deal, we almost right actually now. cut it from the game specifically because it just it felt too much like a traditional tank and that feels kind of weird for an artillery unit well you say it's like a traditional tank but then you forget that in the alpha the juggernaut was the only thing that could shoot for like two kilometers I mean, <laughs> it was the only thing that could base the base a map that big. Uh, yeah but i don't know if we necessarily want to uh, encourage base to base that was unintentional <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Um, will a fully implemented AI bot be implemented for a Firestorm? Um, we already have some AI that are able to play Renegade X uh, game mode, but um, will there be any further modifications to make it more for Firestorm Havoc? Uh, that remains to be seen as to how much time we have after we're uh happy with the core foundation of the game uh that's where all of our priorities are at the moment and we don't exactly have like a giant group of programmers that know ai programming so uh that remains to be seen as to is there going to be enough time when we're sort of comfortable with the way that the game plays and we can actually invest time into something like ai ideally yes Realistically, maybe. 
Okay, will we be able to hear the iconic Cabal voice when playing as Nod Factions? Yes, oh, absolutely. Well. Maybe. <laughs> if you consider the original like Cabal uh, announcer from the game, then we're not taking the actual sound clips. We're more or less just yeah, right. We need more it. sound clips than you know we're actually in the game. Yeah. So we have our own Cabal. Yeah, not not the Cabal, but we have our own. We'll do our best. Voice modulation is top priority. <laughs> it's it's hard as well. Um, you have to find the, the the right voice actor, and you also need somebody who knows how to modulate voices to make it sound like a ball. Uh, so, depending on if we can nail that combination. Oh, By the way, missile launch detected. Yeah, like that. That probably wouldn't do it. No. GDI's reckoning has begun. Okay. Uh, oh, nice. Next. Is a pretty big one. Uh, why on UDK and why not on UE4 or UE5? Oh, who's answering this one? I guess I can answer that one. Okay. Uh, because we already have a massive foundation built on UDK. That's pretty much it. It's just it was. It is just because we have a a foundation built. Uh, this was already mostly built up before we even thought about moving to Unreal 4. And again, like the last dev talk said, yeah, there are some plans to possibly move engines, whether that'll just be updating Ren X or moving Firestorm over to Unreal 4 remains to be seen. But for now, we know UDK. We had a lot of this implemented in the UDK already. And it's just a matter of building for the entire framework and then applying everything yeah people As often, to, uh, yeah people often forget like how long renex has actually been in development sometimes um and the udk version the udk multiplayer version has been in development since 2012. uh we are a small indie team uh that are all doing this on our own free time so it takes a long time to be able to develop a framework of a game uh, let alone make it really polished and stable. Uh, so we have that already working. We have the groundwork laid out for us from the last eight years. So it's much easier, much faster for us to develop on UDK uh, as opposed to experimenting with a brand new engine that we barely have any experience with. All right, uh, so next question. Will the GDI Firestorm defense system make an appearance in some form? Honestly, I don't think it would be very difficult, but that's going to have to be under a maybe. As the, yeah, just it's, the actual implementation doesn't seem very hard to accomplish. It's actually, there's we have shield walls on a map that was never released, but... Well, at, at the same time, like, gameplay. does yeah, exactly. Does it fit into the game design? If it does, and we can find a way to do it without making it feel gimmicky, then sure. But if it feels gimmicky, then it's kind of pointless. Yeah. Well, uh, that's a to be determined. Thing. Yeah. So we don't know. <laughs> Next question. Next question is on ion storms and chemical missiles. Those are two totally different things, but chemical missiles, we can definitely say yes. Ion storms, potentially. As to how they'll be implemented, that's up in the air. Uh, yeah, I think if anything, it, it might be less about dynamic weather, because again, we just talked about UDK. UDK is a, a dated engine, and then it's going to be a pretty big challenge on this game engine without hitting performance really hard in the face. So. Uh, if anything, if there are iron storms, I personally would prefer it if it's just exclusively to a the way that the map looks, as opposed to you know somehow becoming a dynamic weather system that comes in and out. Uh, that that's way too much for this engine to handle. Yeah, but I mean, eh, maybe we'll find some breakthrough there. Yeah, yeah, that remains to be seen. Our really our priority is the core element of the game. Right. All right. Next question. 
Um, next question is, is there any implementation of stealth subterranean countermeasures like the mobile sensor array? Yep. Actually, uh, if you watch all the alpha videos, you may catch somebody deploying the sensor array and it works. Honestly, think about how the mobile sensor array would work and that's probably how it works. Yeah, it's just pretty really... simple. It just kind of shows that there's a stealth unit around or a burrowed unit around. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have any offensive capabilities. It's basically just a counter. Cool. Okay, so can I be a harvester? This one also got a lot of, uh, of, of like, upvotes. You know, like, we haven't fully really talked about this, but it might be a good idea if, if map sizes are much bigger. Uh... I mean, I think, honestly, I see no reason not yeah. to allow it. It's just, eh, especially like if, if there are players that like to play more defensively, like they they can contribute as opposed to just camping in the base. I mean, yeah, there's always the why would anybody do that? But on the other hand, you have Renegade X, where there's people like me that I'll drift and do figure eights around <laughs> my base looking for stealth units for an hour and a half. <laughs> and like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and like uh, APB has done it as well, right? Like they have drivable harvesters, and it works. Like you just have like a some some person buys a harvester and just keeps it empty. If somebody has time to go do a harvesting rush, or not a rush, but like a, a route, maybe. I mean, I I like the way that they implemented it. I, I think it it could work. So, um, next question is on the official soundtrack. Uh, so we are talking to one or two folks, uh, actually the um, composer that created the soundtrack for the latest trailer. Uh, hopefully we can get him on board. If not, then we definitely want to. I mean, look, the music is a huge part of the game. It was a huge part of the Tiberian Sun ambience and the Tiberian Sun universe. So we do want to get at least uh, a number of tracks um, that are recreations of the original Frank Lepaki tracks. Uh, and we, we want to kind of modernize the style a little bit more, I think. Uh, well, like if you just listen to the trailer track as well, like that's our that's a modernized approach on Stomp and it sounds perfect. Um, exactly. It's familiar and yet very fresh and very new. Very yeah, we have reached out to a couple of people, but I mean, it's, it takes time to compose music. So if you are interested in uh, helping with that and if you are a composer, like hop on over to our forums, uh, uh, respond in the topic for recruitment, and uh, we'll, we'll reach out. Will we be seeing any non-multiplayer units from Tiberian Sun, Firestorm in this expansion, such as Orca transports, dropships, toxin troopers, chameleon spy, mutants, spotlight towers, etc.? Uh, not all of these, definitely, but uh, we do have some of our own original infantry, and uh, we have a toxin trooper, correct? Yes, we have yes. a toxin trooper. So uh, and see. we probably might be seeing uh, drop ships. Yeah, whether it's a drop ship or a carryall, well, it's probably going to oh, be a carryall. Yeah, more than likely, yeah, more than likely carryalls. Yeah. Drop ships may make an appearance, probably not as a drivable vehicle, but mm -hmm. they, they were also never really a good as a drivable vehicle for TS anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the other types of jump, Jeff? Uh, Oh, I was just going to talk about the spotlight tower. Oh my god, it's been a while since I've you said anything wanted... about jump jets. Yo, I'm trying around. to like, talk about those things, okay? <laughs> I do not speak those words around me. <laughs> I'm trying to be sober, okay? You, Continue. Uh, why don't we talk about the spotlight tower? That seems very important. Um, I'm I'll make a spotlight tower right now. <laughs> yeah, it might be the light, and it'll just point at uh, any enemies that show up. I mean, that could be a base defense in a way, like a really cheap base defense. Actually, yeah, honestly, it seems could like work. a very good and like a night map, like a spotlight tower, just as a probably not even a rebuildable defense. Yeah, it's, it's like an atmosphere thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a kind of a map feature thing. Um, it's a knickknack. So, will the Cyborg Reaper be in Firestorm? Uh, that's that's a tough one. Um, the Reaper, is it a vehicle? Is it an infantry? That's already uh, up for debate. I know in TS it was a vehicle, but should it be a vehicle? 
but at the same time, uh, we have nailed down what the core gameplay infantry and vehicle are, and the Cyber Reaper currently does not fit in that space. Um, we may reapproach it after launch, or maybe if we have time at the very end, we'll see. But currently, no, there is no Cyber Reaper planned. Next question. We have a question on special game modes. Will there be more special game modes added, such as objective, survival, etc.? Who wants to answer that? Because uh, I mean, so we do, we do have a, a survival game mode. Um, there is a deathmatch game mode, but everybody still plays CNC mode, and it's 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 really challenging when we we have a community that's already kind of niche anyways to create sub game modes that split the game even more i know we're so, technically doing that with firestorm i i don't really know yeah, you say this but when you think about it people play cnc mode for objective based gameplay but we don't have any other modes that really have like an objective <laughs> I think they'd be fine with like. Well, I mean, survival uh, has uh, objective. No, survival is just kind of, sort of an objective, but it's it's literally just defend a point. Yeah. But it's like CNC mode, but without another base. It's literally much, just yeah. a different side of CNC mode. Mm -hmm. But then you could have uh, something along the lines of like how Battlefront or the new Battlefront, or uh, I know Medal of Honor had objective modes. Uh, where literally it is an attack and defense team. Um, oh. Yeah. We've and always wanted to do some kind of UT2004 assault mode, but uh, right. we'll see. I mean, we, we've tried doing Deathmatch and um, King of the Hill type modes with Renegade X. Sometimes people just leave the server. I mean, Renegade X and in extensions, Firestorm is really about kind of the CNC mode and the RTS FPS hybrid. That's what most people are playing it for. Yeah. But that's the thing. Again, like I said, it's like objective maps. Like people should have objectives to work towards. Yeah, perhaps we like, could like look into expanding survival into like one team has a base and one team doesn't. But it's not like against bots, but rather like two teams. I don't know. Um, I'm not 100% like sure. So related to the special game modes or non-regular CNC type conquest game modes for objectives and survival, we do have, like they said, we do have the framework that is built up in Renex. And even if we don't release any maps that use that format, we do have the software development kit that will be updated whenever Firestorm is released. And the community will be able to create uh, lots of content with that and we'll be able to use the survival framework to create Tiberian Sun survival maps if they wanted to. Yeah, honestly, I really can't wait till uh, the community gets their hands on like Firestorm. It'll be really cool to see what uh, people come up with because yeah. Renex definitely had a lot of cool things that were done and even a lot of things that were Im implemented into the base game that were that started off as mods and mutators. Yeah, a lot of the, the, the game even the current dev team came from the community as well, so. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Yosh for dev. I mean, I guess it's just natural. That. Yeah. Yeah, like, you naturally find people that are uh, inspired and want to work on stuff. So it's cool. But definitely, like, multi-tiered objective maps. Like, like I'm just going to keep referencing, like, uh, the latest Battlefronts. Uh, the old ones might have it, they, I don't know. Um, yeah, where you just keep kind of moving forward in objectives, one team's attacking, one team's defending, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. That kind of needs to rush. Next question, <laughs> any news on, oh, I love Rush, by the way. Oh, that was amazing. That was, yeah, it was. What's oh, so going to get a Bad Company 3? Jesus Christ, like, I mean. We don't need one. Bad Company 2 is still alive. I got to play that. Yeah, yeah. Is it actually still alive? Because of the Steam thing? Well, not even. Bad Company 2 is still good. Everybody doesn't know that. Side note, even putting it in the dev cast, when you look, when you go online and sign in on Bad Company 2, you have to hit search really quick for the servers to come up. You oh, just yeah. have to hit search once. 
<laughs> I'm looking at I'm that's right. I'm plugging a totally different game because I love that game. Yes. Yeah, I think okay. that advice okay. double the player count just next question. <laughs> next question. Any news on a helipad? Uh yeah. Yes. Of course there's gonna be a helipad. There's already a helipad in Renex, it's just uh, nobody yeah. uses it. And we also just, like Sarah just set it up like a little while ago. Well, I guess yeah. the is going to be, is there going to be finite ammo for the aircraft? Um, do you need a helipad to build air units? Ah, uh, yes. There is finite ammo, and it is already up and running right now. Uh, so you do have to go back to your helipad, refill, and then go out. This way, uh, we, we want the air vehicles to be more or less like dogfighting capable, which means it, it gives them insane range. But if you give them infinite ammo, they automatically become way too OP. Uh, so ha limiting the ammo already kind of neutralizes that a little bit. That's really good. Okay, uh, will base building be included in any form if so, what will we get? So oh. we spoke about it a little bit last time, but as you all know, the original alphas, we just had a, like a full on build whatever building you want. Um, we had some performance issues with that. There were other issues. So we do want to have some kind of halfway like base building. We want you to, to be able to rebuild uh, defenses uh, as well as power plants and refineries. Um, but we do not at least for this iteration of Firestorm, uh, we'll ha we will not have rebuilding uh, war factories or barracks. But... Yeah. That is also kind of up in the air. But... Right. It, we may have alternative support structures that you can also build outside of the base to uh, allow building vehicles and infantry without having to build another barracks from your main base. So the barracks will still be the main building in your main base that you would build your advanced infantry from, and your war factory will also be at the base, but then support structures on outside of the base, points that are outside of it, those will allow building of separate support structures. The next building is for Yosh. Will you be able to build spotlight towers? <laughs> oh, spotlight towers? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, uh, so in terms of game that design, wasn't a serious was question. Talking... So you know, I just made that up. Uh, fine, okay. Spotlights and jump chats. My God. <laughs> what about jump spotlights with, with jump chats? Oh my God! I'm putting spotlights on the jump jets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, but in terms of uh, the game design that I was talking about earlier, we because we do want it to go larger scale, we need um, something that kind of works similar to how bottlenecking maps in Run X works, where it does create like a point of contention, and that's where we have built uh, outposts. And outposts will likely have uh, an X number of slots where. Uh, you can build some of those support structures, like power plants, yeah. base defenses, refineries. Right. Uh, so, on top of that, I just thought of actually a really good thing that was in CNC uh, Command and Conquer Three. I think Kane's Wrath introduced the combat support airfields as support structures. So, basically, taking that idea, where you have something that's cheaper than the main building, doesn't have the full functionality to like build units but you would build these closer to like the enemy base because you're not as worried about those dying because they're way cheaper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Especially with the larger map scales, uh, trying to drive a vehicle from your main base to the center of the map every time you die, that's going to be a pain in the butt. So right. like that idea of the, uh, the carry all potentially uh, delivering a vehicle to your outpost, that's, that's one thing one way of what we might tackle support structures for. Next question, will there be a mutant hijacker? It depends who you ask. Yeah, yeah. I said no. He I'm says no. I'm all for it existing. <laughs> you can put it in the comments. I just need YouTube to help me get this in the game. <laughs> what about 
So, so there, I, I will explain why I said no, and that is again uh, the the core design philosophy, where um, the base game itself that should feel uh, balanced all the time. It should feel fun. It doesn't need to have every single like little bit of detail. It, it can be basic and it can be simple and it can be fun. That yeah. is that is really Sometimes. the core element. Having is fun part of Renegade. <laughs> exactly. No, certainly. I, yeah, I mean... You played Halo, you understand. Just dude, I've, I've played enough SBH to know how much fun it can be to steal a vehicle. No, I, I get it. I certainly get it. Cool with somebody in it, even better. <laughs> and just nicking him with the crowbar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tiberian son. I feel like he's more advanced than just a piece of metal in his hand. <laughs> it's got a Tiberium crowbar. Yeah, yeah. It's, for me. it's like a base, baseball bat, but like instead of nails, it's got Tiberium spikes. Blackjacks. <laughs> you can just have like a, a hacking thing. Uh, give him a. Uh, yeah, screw it. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, the focus for me in general is the combat loop is more important to nail down first. You say that, but <laughs> I really want myself a mutant hijacker. Uh, well, oh. we'll see. See, like we're always debating ideas and topics, so that's that's always that's why we don't debating. really have all of the answers yet because we're we're figuring it out. Now imagine if the master has changed eight times. Imagine if it was not based on an actual game. We wouldn't agree on anything. Um, so the next one, That's a real problem, you know? It is, yeah. <laughs> no one has the same vision, right? This is mm-hmm. what it's going to get. Uh, so will the Math Mark II be multi-person controllable? Example, pilot for railguns, passenger for missiles and machine guns. Oh, boy, I love this question. We have a couple Black ideas. Glasses. We have yeah. lots of ideas. Yeah, yeah so you uh, go for it. Uh, personally, this isn't set in stone, but there were always lots of why give everyone only one weapon? That's a really, really big vehicle. We could basically make it the battleship of the game. So perhaps have the driver have, you know, the main rail guns, but then maybe give them something utterly ridiculous, like you know, the ability to call in ion cannon strikes on a lengthy cooldown or orb bombardments and then give, you know, the second the passenger, obviously it's got a really obvious chin turret so give them, you know, access to the chin turret maybe modify the chin turret a little bit to have some secondary ammo they can use and then, you know, a third person could have control of the SAMs and maybe some missile bays on the back sort of added to the side you know. Another idea we had was because uh, a, a real question was on how we could implement the Hunter Seeker droid, and uh, I think I think honestly, as a tertiary weapon on the Mammoth Mark, would be a really good idea. It would be kind of like uh, the Unreal style of you know the Redeemer, where you're just kind of steering that nuke towards a target. I think that could be really cool. Actually, now you're giving me the idea. Maybe. Maybe that could be the secondary weapon of the second seat. Just be like a laser pointer for uh, pointing out targets for a hunter seeker. Uh, this is how, flu- this is how fluid our development is. We're like literally doing a dev talk and we're thinking of ideas. So, <laughs> <laughs> but to answer that question, yeah, there's going to be a multi-operator use. Yes. yes, the answer is resounding yes or yes, as Sean Connery would say. <laughs> Uh, will Ghost Stalker Umagon be in Firestorm? Ghost Stalker, yes. Uh, Umagon, uh, no. No. Well, we have we have the weapon for the Ghost Stalker. It's not exactly a Ghost Stalker, but we have a rail gun and we have a sniper. Well, like we were thinking of more uh, epic units, but uh, it's not necessarily confirmed yet. Right, uh, just just like how you have the prototype Sydney and the mutant Rav in Renex, it, that's that's kind of what our initial thoughts were. We haven't fully thought about this idea yet. Right, so it'll be a uh, Ghost Doctor Numagon. Like the special characters are sort of on the back burner, while everything else, like the main game, is being developed. 
Yep. So you have like more generic infantry generally, but heroes are in the Yeah, exactly. Like any character that you can purchase doesn't have a face. They just have a helmet. They have whatever face they you have put underneath the helmet. They have nothing underneath the helmet. They have no face. But you are the face. You are the you face. Are. <laughs> it could be black, white, Asian, mutants. Fill in the you want. <laughs> Okay, uh, will there be laser fences and firestorm walls? I think we mentioned the firestorm walls, but laser fences? I mean, probably laser fences at some point, but it's just like... What purpose did this serve beyond just being an obstacle, right? Like They're actually kind of cool, though. I do like them. They oh, seem yeah, like they, they, they look go awesome. They like an objective map. Like, they need to be disabled on an objective map or something. But for the most part, laser fences. Yeah, let's just say someone's going to probably implement them because they're already implemented in the right X. So, in their existence, it's probably not a question. Yeah, yeah. the power plant turn them off in Renegade X? No, they're just there in Renegade X. Most, okay. Next question, will the smoke screen launcher on the GDI designs be usable? So actually, I believe, what is it? The, we were thinking about smoke on the APC, the AAPC. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, there the Wolverine, some ideas about the Wolverine that. could also still get a secondary ability, like those <laughs> jump ships. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I would love to add those. <laughs> uh, at one point, were we talking about something? Yeah, you did. Ability on the uh, walkers, like Titan. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure. Don't we? We already have. We already have the hover mouse. Hover mouse is already yeah. there. It's oh, the yeah, same the hover same hover framework. <laughs> yeah, the hover mouse already has the ability to you know jump and crouch. Well, I mean, raise and lower jumping and crouching doesn't make sense, but yeah. And then, yeah, so a, few, a lot of the vehicles will probably be more than go forward, backwards, and left click. Yeah, I, I like, is, yeah. is the vehicle fun to play is really the question, and that's why I think a lot of the vehicles do have abilities and other functions. Right. So, yeah, you can probably expect to see mm, Titans being able to walk over things and... Wolverine's doing more than just going <laughs> constantly. Yeah, I think we had that like stomp idea for the uh, the Titan at one point. Yeah. Before like it even pound. existed. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say ground pound around the one with the Yoshi in their name, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so last question. Will the obelisk be double A ground or ground only? Like anti it's anti air. Yeah. And uh, air plus ground. I think so, the obelisk would probably just need to be. It would have a firing angle because it's it's really difficult to just say because in the RTS there's an obvious reason everything's not anti air. When you go to an FPS format, it's really weird then I was, would be able to shoot an aircraft that's flying like three feet above the ground. Like, it's it definitely yeah, right. able to shoot this. It doesn't just say, that's an aircraft, I can't shoot it. So more than likely, it's probably going to come down to a firing angle that things are capable of using. Or maybe like a 90 degree angle? Yeah, well, yeah, 90 is The other thing is like, like um, we could even theoretically just go exclusively on uh, build slots for base defenses. So, like, you have the option of like putting down a, a SAM site or putting down an obelisk or something like that. Well, uh, no, I mean, well, not that. It's just the cannon of like a ground defenses should probably uh, right, be able yeah. to shoot at aircraft that are flying that low. Like, it just doesn't seem right that they wouldn't mm -hmm. be able to try it. Yeah, but then like anti on the same token, maybe anti air defenses. If people are like on top of a hill, that same site might actually be a threat to you. <laughs> Could be interesting. We'll have to try it out and see how it goes. Yeah, and that's it in terms of questions. Cool. Uh, I so, guess yeah. that's everything we wanted to cover for today. Uh, I'm sure we'll be back again, assuming uh, there's more questions. Lots more questions about spotlights. <laughs> spotlights, good jump shots. Jump shots.
jump jets with spotlights. Actually, I do like spotlight towers with jump jets. <laughs> Would you go them as missiles that don't explode, that just oh crash into the ground? I just throw spotlight towers at people. I love it. <laughs> so wait, does does Nod then get like stealth spotlights? Stealth <laughs> spotlight towers? <laughs> a, a useless spotlight that you can't see? Can I have... Spotlights that can spotlight the stealth spotlights in midair. We have got to stop right now before we go on to the next 10 minutes. Probably. <laughs> All right, so we hope you guys are able to spotlight this uh, dev talk. Uh, so again, hit like, subscribe, uh, post any comments, questions. Uh, we'll try to get to them in the next little while. And hey, it's August. I mean, that's really exciting. We're almost there. Okay, just a few more months. And again, no confirmed deadline, but quarter four, 2020. And yeah, we hope you guys don't um, <clears throat> die uh, from COVID. Ouch, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> a little extreme, a little harsh. Uh, we hope. We're, we're giving them a, a nice hope. Very beautiful hope. So beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you guys should uh, definitely stay safe and... Uh... You know, do your best to wear a mask. Okay, we're doing what? We're doing the hand washing this year. Next year, we're gonna be doing um, signaling in, in cars. Okay. Oh, do we all have to learn Morse code? We're gonna learn very basic skills, like how to use a flashlight to, to communicate. Yeah, that's a little maybe in twenty thirty. <laughs> Like 2030s Tiberian Sun. when Tiberian Sun yeah. takes place. <gasps> when Tiberian Sun takes place, we'll be figuring out uh, Morse code. <laughs> so we're happy to say that even six years after release, we're still generating a more and more active player base. I mean, we've had more players in the last few months than we've had in a very long time. We're building a North American audience. We have more people playing in the evenings. We have, you know, over 200 people playing at some times. So, so visit renegade-x.com, download the game, download the client, update it. If you have any questions, you can always come to our forum and we'd be happy to help, technical questions or otherwise. And see what times work best for your time zone. Uh, but again, a lot of active players nowadays, we're very excited. All right, great talking to you guys, and uh, peace out. Bye, everybody. Bye. Sarah, say bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> See you next time.